welcome folks to another episode of Will's Review. I'm your host Will D and it is Cinco de Mayo and we are starting with a 5 o'clock start time from this moment forward uh, because there's a new show following me at 6 o'clock so make sure after this you stay tuned for the comments section. Uh, but in the meantime let's do our thing. So first sports, I'm going to get this out the way. Uh, Brownsville's hero was in a match last night and came up short <laughs> as Canelo Alvarez is the unified champion now. So yay to him. Uh, of course, you know, nice way to celebrate uh, Cinco de Mayo and the Mexican champion. Uh, <laughs> real, and, and real quick, just since I'm, I, I've said Cinco de Mayo twice, so today is Cinco de Mayo, which is literally about a Mexican victory over France in the city of Puebla, right? It's like not celebrated throughout all of Mexico. It's literally just, uh, just in the one city. And then Americans, who the French were trying to attack, right? They thought it'd be smart, go into Mexico, sneak up and attack America, right? They, Americans just take this thing way too far. So all you got to do today, America, is chill out, tell ICE to take the day off, pop back some tequila and some Corona, and have a taco, all right? That's it. That's all you got to do today. Nothing else, nothing special. <laughs> don't wear the hats. Don't wear the clothes. Just enjoy some food, some liquor, and leave Mexicans alone for today. All right? Trump, you too. You're included. <laughs> um, but then also in sports, the only thing really I really want to talk about in sports, not the only thing happening, right? Baseball's happening. Uh, hockey's happening. But the Islanders are the New York team that's in it, so I don't really care. And uh, the only thing really happening I want to talk about is basketball. So last night, the Warriors lost. And they're still winning the series 2-1. Uh, just, it, just, it just makes it more interesting, folks. It's nice when you don't get a sweep. It, it is. It's just, it's just more interesting. I don't like to see a team sweep even if I want the team to win the series. It just makes it boring. It's like, why did you even play that team? It wasn't worth your time. It wasn't worth my time. I just spent four days stressing for no reason because they were nothing. Yeah, exactly. I want to get a series that's so good we get a game six. It's definitely a game seven, right? Like That's when you know it was intense. That game seven, there's nothing more important in a series than a game seven. Right? And there's nothing better for a fan than to feel the vibe. Like You can be watching on TV or at the stadium, and you still feel the intensity coming from the floor, from the field, from the whatever. Right? Like that's, that's just what a Game 7 means. So Rockets were literally building a team the past few years to play the Golden State Warriors. And then the last two years, they really put up a challenge. This season, this playoff season didn't seem like they were, but last night they put on a win. So maybe, just maybe, this series will get a little bit more interesting. I'm really hoping it will. Because although I want Golden State to win it, I want them to earn it. Just make it a little more interesting for me. Let me enjoy the fact that I have to watch this for a, an hour and a half, two hours, right? Like, let me, let me have fun with it. Um, other than that, too, we have uh, the Bucks and the Celtics, who have been having a pretty, a pretty decent series. Um, it really feels more so like when one team is messing up too much, the other one takes advantage more so than either team beating them. Um, but the, the Bucks have two wins over one, so that series is still pretty close as well. Uh, the Nuggets are playing uh, later on tonight at 7, and they're down in their series against the Trailblazers 1-2. to two. Um, So, you know, another one that's a very close series. This series is probably the closest match series out of the four happening right now in the playoffs. So, I, although for me it's also the least interesting, if you're someone who just wants to see some really close-level basketball, that's the one to watch. Uh, for me it's least interesting because I'm not invested in either team. Uh, and at the same time, I don't think either one of them has a shot at winning the championship. So it's a waste of time, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, whoever walks out of that will lose to either the Rockets or the Warriors, and I am saying that now. Uh, then the last series, which is actually being played as we're speaking right now, is the Raptors versus the 76ers. So by the end of the episode, I will update you with the results as far as it is by the end of today's episode, all right? Um, but right now, the Raptors are losing that series 1-2. to two. Um, and as far as today's game, like I said, I'll update you before we leave today's episode. At the moment, we're going to go to our first commercial break. When we come back, there's a lot happening in New York City we're going to talk about. And a lot of movies to discuss. This is going to be a big movie weekend, folks. Let's talk to you in a few. Dice game, life is a dice game, taking chances, 
we scramble to survive. Life is a dice game, taking chances. We gamble to stay alive. Life is a dice game, taking chances. We scramble to survive. Life is a dice game, taking chances. We gamble to stay alive. Life is a dice game, taking chances. Life is a dice game, taking chances. Life is a dice game. Chances, life is a dice game, a dice game Exceptional, dressed to impress Representable, nothing less than the best Commendable, wow I'm on a whole different level now Migrated, toured from state to state Still looking for the right woman to settle down Open up business plans with a quick can Stick to the plan, get rich with the fam Never run out of luck and get stuck in a sunken place Deeper than quicksand, I could be anything The mic I chose, life is like a dice game Metaphorically the dice gets thrown Four, five, six, then the trips The dice is my hope to get rich So one night I'ma be lounging with my wife on the boat It's one life to live like a soap pepper Life is a dice game, taking chances We scramble to survive Life is a dice game, taking chances we gamble to stay alive. Life is a dice game, taking chances. We scramble to survive. Life is a dice game, taking chances. We gamble to stay alive. Facing a lot of reality checks. If it wasn't prison or jail, then it had to be death. Thinking God daily that I'm not a casualty yet. Saying if it happened to them, then I had to be next. All the jealous, envious. Pretend to be brothers Time is money and some is not as expensive as others I've been cheated and left for death from the ones that I needed I don't bother to tell nobody my problems, I see it Say they want me to make it, just to make me believe it They just want a front for the public, we're drinking you I don't talk about all the cloud and the style that I gave them I don't talk about all the times they were down and I gave them I don't talk about when I'm down and I'm out and they dub me I don't talk about when it's time to pop out and they love me I don't talk about all the thugs that I gave them to hustle I don't talk about all the love that I gave them Life is a dice game, taking chances We scramble to survive Life is a dice game, taking chances We gamble to stay alive Life is a dice game Taking chances, we scramble to survive. Life is a dice game. Taking chances, we gamble to stay alive. I tell you what, the kids gonna throw the dice. Get on with this. I don't like this kid throwing dice. Hey, hey, huh? I got a Anybody got a problem with that? That's all right, no problem. Huh? I want you to throw the dice. I'm not gonna play dice. That's okay. You don't have to. You just, you just listen to me. You know what I said? Just listen to me. All right, so like I was saying, there's a lot happening in New York, so we're going to go run down the gauntlet um, of things happening in our city. Uh, first and foremost, I, I'm just finding out about this. It seems like it's been going on for a little bit, but uh, there's a guy called the Pizza Pusher, and for New York and New Jersey, more so within Jersey City area, right, um, this guy has been... Uh, Infusing foods with cannabis. So, you know, visit the pizzapusher.com if you want some legal edibles. And they got pizza, they got gelatos, they got uh, cannolis, which I don't know. I don't know what a cannabis cannoli is going to taste like, but it's a thing. <laughs> um, but that's something that's been going on, and they let him do it because the city, you know, has had the open thing with cannabis. So you have the edible trucks that are in Times Square and things like that. So if you're someone who's looking for some legal whatever before the state decides to legalize it, because the Blasio's messing with our hearts with this one, right? I'm not even a smoker, but it's just that it'd be nice to know that my friend down the block won't get arrested while smoking his joint. That's all I'm saying. So this is a way for you to get around that. Save your money, screw the bud man, put your money into some food. You know, feed your belly, lose the munchies, get high. My suggestion. Uh, but yeah, the pizzapusher.com, folks. Uh, then... Uh, another thing happening in the city, which is on a negative, thanks to de Blasio, no more alcohol ads on public city property, right? So bus stops, train stations, um, anything that the city owns, not owned by a private business or company, right? That's that sort of thing. These guys are banning alcohol ads. So no more Hennessy ads, no more Zvetka ads, uh, all of that good stuff. Now, for the most case, I've always wondered why alcohol seems to feel like it needs to advertise itself. It's alcohol. 
people are going to buy it. All they care about is the price. And what I mean by that is, if you told someone that this brown drink costs five hundred dollars, they're going to feel that it's an exclusive brand, that it's very special, that it shows that they're rich. When frankly, all you did was pull in some like twenty dollar E and J, and you know they just were fooling themselves because they didn't see a label. Alcohol doesn't need to be advertised. People are going to buy whatever they can afford or whatever shows off their status, right? You know, a lot of homeless people save up all that change again and get ten dollar vodka. Why? Because it screws you up just the same as two hundred dollar vodka. You're literally paying for either a specific taste or status. And in most cases, that's not what people drink for. They drink for effect. So the Blasio, although I think I, I get what you're trying to do and you're trying to make the, 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 you know, the city better and influence people less to drink, dude, the city's full of bars and alcohol is something that people want because they're told they can't have it for so long. If you want to make people not drink and reduce the number of drinkers and stuff like that, legalize it back at 18. Legalize it at 16, the same age that people can allow themselves to separate themselves from families and whatever, right? All I'm saying is, may, you know, I know a lot of people that get upset at me for saying stuff like this, but if you look at a lot of other foreign countries, you're allowed to drink before you can drive, so that way you know your tolerance level because they realize you're going to drive home at least one time while intoxicated. All I'm saying, folks. Uh, de Blasio, too, is also going to announce a 2020 bid, supposedly, at some point this week, to which... I would also like to tell de Blasio, your half-black son won't win you this one. Let's move on. <laughs> Wegmans is a supermarket that's around the country. You mostly see it when you're outside of New York City. But they will be opening their first New York location October 27th. Why am I bringing this up of all things? Because what the hell's a Wegmans got to do? The reason I bring it up is that there will be 500 jobs. Nowhere near as much as Amazon is going to bring, but still 500 jobs that need to get filled for this store to open by October 27th. So if you are someone looking for work, you live in the lower Manhattan or Brooklyn area, this is probably where you want to look towards. This is going to be opening up by the Brooklyn Naval Yard. So yes, for you Southern Manhattaners, it will be a trip. But it's a job. It'll pay for the Metro card itself. Wegmans, October 27th, hiring now. Look for the work, all right? And I know it's a ways away, but if you know you have a job in October, I think you're going to be stressing a little less between now and then doing whatever random gigs that you're doing along the way to eat. That's all I'm saying. And in the meantime, you probably will have the city give you some assistance if you aren't already doing that already. The other place that's hiring right now that I want to mention, especially for all the New Yorkers who are drivers, MTA. Now, we all hate the MTA when we have to take it. But the people who work for the MTA, they live lovely. So... The MTA is hiring for bus drivers as well as many other positions, but bus drivers, right? And then why I bring this up? Because bus drivers normally, when they retire, get that special little card where they can ride buses for you for the rest of their lives, right? Train conductors do the same with the trains. That one's more valuable. They're not hiring right now. Bus drivers are hiring right now. $23 an hour start. Look on the MTA website and apply if you qualify. Uh, so especially guys who are accessoride guys. Now, you always hear me shouting out accessoride because I hate old people on my transit. This is a chance for you to move up and get that pension benefit, all right? MTA, bus drivers, right now. We're putting you on. And you're like, why are you advertising for MTA? I'm not. I'm trying to help people get work because we all broke and we need money. And the place is giving money right now. I'm looking out for you, folks. <laughs> this is why you watch my show. I put you on. <laughs> um, and then shout out. It's the 40th anniversary for Urban uh, Rangers, right? And what that is, those are the people who help us when we're at city parks. Um, they're the people who open up the basketball courts for us at certain public parts. They're the people that help us when, um, when we're at Central Park and then we need to figure out where we're going because that park can be a freaking maze. These are guys who used to, or who are known more so for like picking up trash until about 20 years ago when they had to start interacting with us. A lot more recreational things start to happen in the parks and they're the people who guide us. So congratulations to you, 40 years of service. Um, and you know, keep helping us out folks. You definitely need it because you don't know anything once you get around trees. We're urban. <laughs> You're the Rangers. <laughs> um, then, something else I wanted to talk about. The Jonas Brothers are coming to New York. <laughs> I know, right? Really weird for, sort of for me to want to like, be hype about that. But, here's the thing, folks. I am not a Jonas Brothers fan, as like all the girls used to be with like, you know, Radio Disney. 
But I did like some of their songs, folks. They, and they're going to be doing a concert with some of their old songs and some of the new ones that they've been working on and things like that. So it would be, for me personally, if I can get the tickets, uh, something to enjoy because it made me feel like I was when I was like 15, 16 years old. It was a good time. They have a couple of hits. I even have like two or three songs on my iPod. And y'all know that y'all were messing around with one of the brothers when he did that song, Cake, with that whole cake thing. And then, talk to me, baby. You know you know you're messing with that song. You can't tell me you weren't. So they're going to probably do that somewhere in there, too. Uh, but speaking of the Jonas Brothers, one of them just got married. So uh, congratulations to Joe Jonas. Uh, he, he just got married to uh, Zanza Stark from Game of Thrones. So uh, yay to him. She's finally a citizen as well because she keeps taking our acting jobs. Um, you might have... Uh, yeah. I mean, they got married in Vegas, but who cares where they got married at? You know how many you know how many people get married in Vegas? I mean, you know. I mean, what what was that? Uh, uh, what's that show, Growing Up Hip Hop or something like that? And uh, what was that Peppa's daughter was trying to get married in Vegas? They threw a fit. Oh, that was hilarious. I I, I gotta admit, I I watch a lot of TV, right? A lot of good TV, a lot of bad TV. And one of the shows from my bad TV list that I am willing to admit I watch is Growing Up Hip Hop, mostly because I love Romeo. It's like he's high all the time, and I don't even think he smokes. He's just that chill. But the ratchetness that comes from Peppa and all of her friends makes the show worth watching in all honesty. Uh, but yeah, they had a Vegas moment, but Joe Jonas' turn was in Vegas. Um, I, you know, like he said, he was like, oh, they got married in Vegas. Oh, they got married in Vegas. It's cheaper. I would do the same thing if I could. But the plane flight costs more than the damn marriage. <laughs> well, we ain't talking about all that right now. They just got married. Give me, give me at least 72 hours, right? That's how long it took. A, oh, no. Oh, wasn't it 48 for Kim Kardashian? She beat Britney Spears? Yeah, yeah. She beat Britney Spears with uh, that Chris Humphreys dude. Who, uh, is he even playing ball still? I, don't even, I didn't know he was in the league until he got married to her. And then I don't know if he was in the league after they divorced. Um, but, yeah. Uh, a great moment in New York as well has happened this past week. Because we now actually are all able to tell you where Sesame Street is. It is officially the intersection of 63rd and Broadway. If you don't know where that is, it's probably because you're in Brooklyn and Queens and you live in Long Island. But uh, the rest of us from New York City actually know where that is. Um, and it's actually but so far from where they record Sesame Street. Uh, so although I could have told you where the studio was before, as I have visited the studio and have been in episodes, uh, it is now officially, and I mean there's a sign in everything, 63rd and Broadway. So when they ask you how to get to Sesame Street, tell them to take the 1 or the A or the, <laughs> the B, you know what I'm saying? Because we can get there now. Uh, <laughs> and in all seriousness, there's something really nice opening in Harlem. It's called the uh, Soul Cinema Cafe. And the Soul Cinema Cafe is going to be a new hub for black culture and indie culture in Harlem, where they're going to be playing independent films. You can host certain events there and um, enjoy some, some food and drinks as well. So, you know, look out for that coming to us this summer. Um, and it's right there on Adam Clayton. So with you in Harlem, you definitely going to know how to get over there. Uh, on that note, we're going to go to our next commercial break. And when we come back, there's a lot of entertainment news. And we're going to hit all these news. All these news.
so we're back. So a couple other things I wanted to get to. So first and foremost, I enjoyed this huge, huge rant that happened in Congress this past week where this guy pretty much called Trump out on all his BS. Uh, after hundreds of truck drivers in Ohio were laid off, this guy who represents Ohio was just going off about how Trump's biggest promise about work ain't happening. If that's the case, how all these people getting laid off, it was, it was great. You got to check it out. I put it on the World's Review page. You'll enjoy it. And it's just so honest and emotional and, like, seriously, it was great. Um, I know, like, it's one of those rare times I say something bad about Trump. No, I didn't even say it. I just enjoyed watching this guy talk all this crap. It was beautiful. Um, another thing that I posted on the World's Review page I want you guys to check out, people are now buying an extra thumb. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so there's this, there's this new mechanical thumb that's supposed to help you with, like, all these other things. You're, you, it's not because just replacing a thumb. It's just literally, like, you need an extra thumb. And then <laughs> the ad is really awesome because it really shows you all the use of it. It makes you feel more like a monkey, I think. And they don't even have two thumbs, like, on the hand. Just, you know what I'm saying? So check it out. It was really cool. It was really weird, but really cool because I was thinking about it, and I'm looking at the stuff that he's doing. I'm just like, you know what? I wonder if that thumb is, like, $20. <laughs> it looks so useful. So, yeah, an extra thumb. Think about it, people. I, I know I am. I'm definitely thinking about thinking about. You know, I could use an extra thumb. I could grip a lot more stuff with an extra thumb. Seriously, I've really been debating this like the last 48 hours since I saw it. Um, <laughs> but speaking of Facebook, has anyone else noticed the change on Facebook? Right? Like, no, I'm I'm, I'm talking purely the display of it, or even even the fact that you have to like click the the um search symbol to now open up the search bar on the, the new Facebook is trash. And I know I've said this before, but I feel like every other time that Facebook changes its layout, it gets all right, right? Like, I miss the old, old Facebook. Like, do you remember when Facebook used to have the, like, Will is feeling kind of nonsense thing, right? Like, I miss that. That was nice. Which, which now looks stupid because half the time your statuses in the memory section don't make sense because that part is missing from the sentence. <laughs> but back in the day, that was lovely. I remember when there used to be, are you interested in everything, like on Facebook, all the games were cooler, the layout was better. I remember when Facebook used to have like a really simple layout when it was just for college kids when my sister used to be on there, right? Like old Facebook was dope. This new Facebook, how is Facebook now a white page when it's a blue thing? Then that really irks me, like they had the white as the majority and the blue like outlining. That's really irksome to me now because that's not the Facebook I've always known and loved. I hate Facebook right now. Right? And it's not even the people on it this time. Like, it's literally Facebook. And then Facebook is talking about re remarketing itself for, like, personal messaging and e-commerce mostly. Homie, you messed up. It's more than college kids on it now. Keep up the candy crush <laughs> and, and all the nonsense because that's the only way you're going to keep flowing. Otherwise, you're going to end up like Vine. You're going to end up like MySpace. You're going to end up like all the other sites that used to be popular but couldn't keep up with people changing. Change with people, folks. Because I don't feel like having to start something again after having Facebook for over 10 years. I'm not, mm -mm, not doing that over again. We're not, we're not going back that way. All right? I keep Insta Instagram stealing from Snapchat. Keep it relevant. I'm not, I'm not getting any more than anything to do with Facebook. That's it. Just go back to being blue. All right? Mad. You got me mad. When I, when I, I saw this, I swear to God, when I saw it late the other day, I was just mad as hell. Yeah, all that, all that nonsense, man. It's ridiculous. Um... And then, for some of y'all who didn't know, yesterday was Star Wars Day, right? So, like, May 4th is officially Star Wars Day. I don't remember the reason why. It's just a thing. So, I saw a whole bunch of Star Wars memes, and that was really great. So, I don't know if you, if you didn't catch it on your timeline. Make sure you find a geek group and, like, scroll back. Tons of really funny stuff, especially considering that Part 9 is going to be happening in December. So, just take a look out for that. And then... The real thing that's been going on the past few weeks, Game of Thrones. It has gotten to the point where people are literally starting to talk about naming their daughters Arya. Not Arya Stark, but just Arya, you know? Um, and see, Charles is back here saying, oh, hell no. I'm saying, hell yeah. Did you see what she did to the Night King? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm sorry. That little girl has been the most badass character sitting up the show, except for maybe Snow. But in all honesty, her transition has been even cooler than his. Right? He's always kind of been that rugged, badass, cool dude. She's grown into such a badass, and she's going to take out the biggest evil. Although Snow fought a dragon, he was about to lose. She won. That's all I'm saying. She got her little pointy sword that looks like it couldn't do nothing to nobody, and she's been taking over the world since then. 
Arya Stark for president. <laughs> I've been loving it. This this show has been so, has been something that like you know changed the game as far as TV. And HBO is always that network to do that, right? They had Oz. They had uh, what what was that show with all those girls on it? The Sex and the City. Sex in the City, right? Um, and uh, The Sopranos to be honestly for me the, the biggest, right? These are shows that unite people regardless of color creed stats whatever they just sit down talk about this on monday morning and if you dare spoil it for them because they have to wait until monday evening to actually watch it on the on demand they will kill you monday morning so this show has been that new show i've been enjoying the fact that this show has come out with the age of social media being on hyperdrive and sharing it like live streaming the show with people and stuff like that has been awesome these last few episodes have been amazing it took like three years for winter to come but when winter got here the blizzard came in a flurry and then disappeared because Arya Stark is the GOAT. So, that this has been great. Now that winter is over, it's about to get heated up. It's going to be human versus human. I'm really excited for tonight's episode. We only got a couple more left before this thing is over. And I really feel that if you're someone who's even read the books, the show is going to outdo any ending the books are going to have. Period. Because I'm my mind was already blown after last week's episode. <laughs> Crazy. But seriously, I might have to name my daughter Arya because she's badass. She's, she's just badass. Now, a lot of movies. There's a lot of movies to talk about right now. So first what we're going to do, before we get into our end game breakdown, which is how we're going to wrap up the show, I'm going to put you on to all of the movies that are going to be coming out this summer to keep an eye out on. Right? So I need you to grab a pen, a paper, Right, you might have to put this. Remember, this this you're gonna be watching this online, so you know you can wind back and catch up. But just just get your stuff together. We got a lot of stuff to get through, a lot of stuff that you should be looking out for. Right, I'm gonna take our last break after that, and then we're gonna do our fans where we can wrap up with the end game breakdown. So first, we have a couple more movies coming out this month that have been cool. Some of them that started out, we already we're gonna talk about them at the end of this episode. But next week, you got Detective Pikachu coming out which is a great family film. Um, and all of us who love Deadpool, well, Spider-Man also speak at you. Press Justice Fifth from the Get Down will be your other lead. Definitely worth the watch. Then we got John Wick coming out on the 17th. John Wick 3, Parabellum. Now, I don't know if you've seen any other John Wick, but the fact that this thing has a, a title that you can't even pronounce makes me think that this movie is going to blow my brains out. John Wick 3, Parabellum, must watch, guaranteed, trust me on it, I'll put money on it that you're going to enjoy it. Like, I'll put $200 on it right now, like, you're going to enjoy that movie. Um, then after following that is going to be Aladdin, the live action. A lot of criticism on this movie from the first images of Will Smith as the genie, but as I see more and more and more of these trailers, it looks like it gets better than what we thought. Still looks a little corny, but it's a Disney movie, so give it what it's due. I know I heard a lot of decent reviews about Dumbo. I just wasn't ever a Dumbo fan to want to go see a live-action version of Dumbo. Uh, and I can say from what I've seen from The Lion King, Aladdin looks a lot better. So I'd say put Aladdin on the list. Then, before we end up the month, we got two movies coming out at the same time worth watching. The first off is Godzilla. If you say Godzilla, I don't like you. It's Godzilla. Okay? Um, but yeah, that, that movie looks amazing. It looks like it's going to be visually stunning. Not... Probably not the best script. The last Godzilla movie wasn't the best script, although it got a lot of critical acclaim. But the visuals, I mean, these fight scenes look dope. Two alphas, monsters at war. It's like all the Godzilla movies that made Godzilla like, pos like, popular were all wrapped into one. And there's a lot of talk about Godzilla mixing up with, with King Kong. That if this movie can lead into that crossover, I'll be too hyped. Like, I'll be screaming at the end of the movie, losing my voice on, on the excitement. Um, but then the other movie coming out is Ma, right? And to which I know my mother would absolutely hate it. But Octavia Spencer is pretty much a creepy old lady hanging around teenagers. Um, and I'm just really interested in her whole story because they all seem to be the kids of the, the, the people she went to high school with. So this looks like it's really going to be intense, really dope. I'm looking forward to it. Now, June starts off with a bang. You got The Secret Life of Pets and X-Men coming out. Now, you, you wouldn't normally put those two together as movies that you must see, but The First Secret Life of Pets was funny, and the X-Men series is 
left a, a lot to be wanted after that last one since they went back in time. Uh, you know, Sophie Turner, Zanza Stark, whatever you want to call her. She's playing a young Jean Grey again. I hated the casting on that in the first place. And now there's a whole entire movie revolving around her. I'm sorry, but after you're Zanza Stark, you don't get to be the most powerful mutant after being a crybaby for six years. You don't, you don't get that at all. I want to see it because I want to see them kill Dark Phoenix and kill her. That's all I'm saying. Um, then following that, you got Men in Black 4, which I personally am not that excited for, considering that Will Smith is no longer in it. But Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson, I'll watch it. I mean, I like them in, in Marvel movies, and, you know, they're both attractive people. It was not going to be a terrible two hours. Can't be three hours, I hope. But two hours. <laughs> then uh, you got Shaft coming out. Shaft looks like it's going to be really funny. Um, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, the new Shaft is the lead actor from this show, Survivor's Remorse. So a lot of, a lot of things are going to be positive about that movie. It's going to be, you know, corny, cheesy, black comedy, but good action. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you watch that movie, you're going to laugh at some point in that film. Guaranteed. Because I'm already laughing in the trailer. And I've seen it several times, still laughing. Uh, Toy Story 4 is also coming out. I was had a lot of reservations about this movie until I saw the trailer. The trailer gives me a lot of hope. Um, and I enjoyed this, the Toy Story section in Kingdom Hearts 3. So a lot of hope for this movie as they expand the universe of Toy Story 2. Like, remember, they're not with Andy anymore. They moved on. So what's next? Then July hits. And July has the big movie that everyone has to be waiting for right now. Spider-Man. And why? Because Endgame was the end of MCU the way that we've known it. They're starting their next phase. It's called Phase 4. Honestly, it's Part 2. right? This is just, just Part 2. This movie is going to have to give us a feel for what they're leading into next. You know, Guardians are going to be coming out with another movie. You know, the new Strange, the new Panther. What's going to be the reason for us to get the Avengers to come back together again? I feel the Eternals are going to be part of the reason why, but how do we even get to that cosmic level, starting with Spider-Man? I'm so excited to find out. And it'd be nice to have some extra scenes at the end of the movie again. Because Marvel, you got us all excited. How do you end the movie without extra scenes? Like, give us some more shawarma or something. Like, anything. That was so messed up. I know people were waiting in the theater and they were like, credits? What are these? <laughs> you don't have credits. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, moving on past that. Then there's a movie called Stuber. Right? Dave Bautista has two movies coming out this year where he's an a agent, a secret agent of some sort. This one looks like it's going to be really funny compared to his other one because he's driving around in an Uber in Compton. Enough said. I'm watching this movie. It's, it's probably going to be the corniest movie of the year, and I'm going to watch it because Dave Bautista is in an Uber and has a gun. Enough said. Like, see? Charles in the background laughing right now. <laughs> the premise just sounds so ridiculous. And, and his uh, co-star is actually a really funny Indian guy that's in a whole bunch of stuff like, as a side character. First real lead movie role. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Um, then you have Lion King coming out in July. Not that excited for, um, especially with all the Beyonce fans talking about Nala. Lion King's never been about Nala. She ain't going to be in the movie that much. Like, chill. Um, then an another movie that's on the low, getting, getting a little hype. Once Upon a Time in L.A. In Hollywood, actually, but... It's it's a Quentin Tarantino film about the 1960s. It sounds like magic. Just off the rip. Quentin Tarantino, 60s, Hollywood. I love it. Then August comes out with a couple of stuff. Fast and Furious. The trailer's on the Wheels Review page. The the, the uh, Hobbs and Shaw movie looks funny. The act's going to be great. Uh, New Mutants is finally hitting theaters, right? It was something that was supposed to hit Hulu a long time ago, and they decided to switch it up. So Marvel's introducing a horror genre Bringing it back to the Blade times. Blade, who saved Marvel, by the way. Uh, so I'm looking to see how they, they pick that up. Not a lot of trailers and stuff shown about it in a, over a year. So we'll see what happens with that series. Um, Artemis Fowl is also getting turned from book into movie. One of the most popular series in books of all time. We'll see how that turns out. And last but not least, The Kitchen. And The Kitchen is a movie about uh, three mob wives who had to take over their husband's business um, in Hell's Kitchen in New York as they get locked up. Uh, and it's a comedy that has Tiffany Haddish in it. So, 
you know, I'm gonna watch it just just because she's so loud, and I can't imagine her as a mob wife. So this is this is gonna be great. Uh, <laughs> on that note, we're gonna go to our last commercial break. When we come back, fans of the week, the movie reviews, and the end game breakdown. Charles, if you could. And we're back. So, uh, I'll start with the movie stuff so you can handle that real quick, Charles. Uh, <laughs> um, so the movies that, we s that we're that we seeing this week are three out of six that I really wanted to get a chance to get to. Um, one of which is called Shadow. I'm, I'm going to see that, I think, on Tuesday. It's only playing at indie theaters. There's one on 57th Street it's playing on and one by uh, West 3rd Street that it's playing on. So look for it. There are two small theaters, uh, 57th and 12th, and the other one I think is on like West 3rd and Bowery or something like that. I'm, I could be all wrong about that, but just just go check it out. Um, but yeah, Shadow, it looks amazing. So Tuesday I have to see that before I go to work. Um, but what I saw this weekend was El Chicano, right? It's supposed to be like the first real Mexican superhero um, I mean, essentially, he's like Mexican Punisher, right? Um, this movie I had a lot of hope for from the trailer. I can't even say it was a bad movie. It's just really drawn out, right? Like, it felt like they, 
explained too much nonsense you didn't need to explain, and saved all the important action for like the last 15 minutes. It's not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie at all. I just feel like they hyped it up so much that you thought there was going to be a lot more action. So it's a 3.5 out of 5 because you're disappointed by how much action you get, but the action you do get is awesome. The story is very simple, basic, but it's not bad. It's not complicated. It's just not enough action for me. Um, the other movie I saw uh, was Ugly Dolls. Right? I went to go see Ugly Dolls because I know a lot of parents are looking for stuff to do with their children. It's a 4.5 out of 5 simply just because it just doesn't draw my adult attention enough. But my ears were very focused and a lot of really good songs in the movie. A very simple message. All the kids in the theater were very happy about this. I thought it was a pretty solid film. 4.5 out of 5. It's just something about it just kind of like I could, I could definitely pay attention to something else more. It's just a little, it's a little off, a little like drawn out, but it, it was entertaining for the most part. It was really good. I think kids will love it. Um, so take into it, but specifically the music. The music was really, really good. And for adults, a lot of good, quick one-liners in there that I think will make you laugh harder than your children. But last but not least, was Intruder. I know a lot of people were hype about this movie. This movie is a 3.5 out of 5, and mostly because although Dennis Quaid does an amazing job. Mega is so oblivious and stupid that it is so frustrating that some of the scenarios actually happen. Like, you, you, you say to yourself so many times, like, how stupid are these people? The entire film. Like, dude, just the entire film. Dennis Quaid does a great job. He makes a great psychopath. But literally, more so Megan Good than even Michael Ely. It's just like, what the hell is wrong with you? It's very frustrating. Now, I, my parents even want to go see this movie, and they say exactly what I'm saying. Because I, my, my dad doesn't like movies at all, but he watched it and enjoyed it just because of Dennis Quaid. So you'll enjoy the movie, but you're going to be so frustrated for those 90 minutes that for me, 3.5 out of 5. Because I'm just sometimes, I said to myself 90% of the time, like, yo, how white are these black people? <laughs> like, from Jump. Because <laughs> we don't do half the crap that they do in horror movies, and y'all know that. But these guys, they were doing that stuff. I was, I was very disappointed. Very disappointed in them as a brother. <laughs> but we're going to get to our fans of the week real quick and we have uh, Frank Carter, songboy who's been here a bunch of times and I decided to post up the fact you know, he's been, he's been messing around on his meme flow lately so I posted up one of his more popular memes right now um, you know, because I, I enjoyed the buffering of the situation um, and then uh, a new person who recently joined uh, the Will's Review fan page uh, Shirley Cogley uh, is this week's fan of the week, so thank you for being a new follower and an active follower at that. Remember, folks, every week we do this. I go through all the posts, I go through all the likes, the comments, all that, and post up the top people. Um, and then last but not least is our picture of the week, which is pretty much insurance Thanos. <laughs> Crack me up because we all know that other than maybe Flo, the Geico Gecko is the number one character of all insurance you know, spokespeople. So he he just... And they all disappear. That's it. I love it. But yeah, so there's that. Um, and then real quick, to just catch up on some other stuff, uh, The Protector Season 2 came out on Netflix. It said 3.5 out of 5, which is disappointing because the first season was so great. This one's just a little slow. It feels like everything's kind of happening in the last few episodes. A couple of good reveals in the first couple, but it, was just, it just took too long to get to anywhere that felt worthwhile. Um, Baki Part 2 came out. A 4.5 out of 5. Now, why 4.5? The ending, it felt a little off. It just felt a little off. It's not where I would have ended that part because they didn't really give you the great, like, grand conclusion to him and the uh, five escaped prisoners. It, they kind of, they, they did it, but it was, it, it hit so flat that it felt like, what was the point of me watching these last 26 episodes? Um, and they lead to other things. But um, all in all, this, this, the action is incredible. Baki grows up. They do a really explicit sex scene with Baki, too, by the way. Just, that was really awkward watching that on the train unexpectedly. Um, <laughs> and uh, they give the greatest shout-out to Muhammad Ali, which I thought was absolutely amazing. So, you know, all the otaku out there, all the Panthers out there, you need to watch this show real quick. Um, and last but not least, I have watched episodes here and there, but um, I wanted to watch it in its entirety. So all five seasons of Lost Girl are on Netflix. The series is four out of five. 
my only thing is they got the whole premise of a succubus wrong right there are two kind of succubus there's a male there's a woman the male has a different name and they only really attack the opposite gender she's a bisexual succubus who's the daughter of the king of hell that, none of that makes sense but other than that it's a great show a lot it's quite identify right in the way that it's filmed but all in all it's very entertaining four or five series check it out all five seasons they got canceled but they had enough time to know that they actually build their actual series finale so watch it on netflix It'll, it'll definitely be something to take up your entire week, maybe two weeks to get through. Um, but I really wanted to do this for you. And I wanted to explain myself on my review of Endgame last week because I know a lot of people felt some type of way about it. Uh, and we have what? We have, a little bit of, we have a little bit of time here, right? Yeah, we got about five minutes. So, Charles, in the meantime, I just want you to just look up the score of the, uh, what was that, the Raptor versus 76 for me real quick. And I'm going to explain Endgame now that I can ruin it. For some of y'all, it's been more than 72 hours, so which is the general geek rule. You got 72 hours before I can ruin stuff. So, Endgame is a movie where we see three important characters disappear, right? Between Infinity Wars and Endgame. In this movie, time travel is very, very important. They establish specific rules to time travel as the movie starts. They even go back and forth comparing it to like Back to the Future and other, and other time traveling movies, Bill and Ted, things like that. At the end of the movie, we saw that taking Gamora from 2014 allowed her access to be in the future. No problem. What their time jumping does is allow her to come from the past to the present and make that part of her destiny so that way she's always supposed to be in the present. Now, why do I say that? If you can pull Gamora from 2014 despite her being a sacrifice of the Soul Stone, theoretically you should be able to do the same for Black Widow. Right? And if you're allowed to pull people through time without changing the future, which is proven by Captain America able to go back in time an entire life, even though he's replacing or putting back the Infinity Stones, he's changing destiny by marrying his wife, by no longer existing through ice and everything like that, right? He should have changed the future. They should have no memory of, of working with and being with Captain America. But they do. And if that's the case, that means that you can go back to Tony Stark, pull him out of 2014, and place him where he needs to be now. By the same rules. By the same rules. Because Black Widow and Gamora both soul storm sacrifices, and Captain America lived through his life again. Which should have changed the timeline completely, but doesn't. And if that's the case, I'm taking Tony, I'm putting him where he needs to be. Period. In fact, I would even put Tony, the, the, I would put that same 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18 Tony Stark, Pluck him from there, put him in the battle, and that way one Tony can kill himself and the other Tony can live his life through. No interferences. That's the proper way to do it. And knowing that as a fact, that means that in the last 30 minutes, after developing a really good story, a really good way to, to fix time and space and all that, in your last 30 minutes you messed up in two ways. For me, a con bad conclusion can ruin everything in a movie. So thus, that is my reason for why I gave the score I give to Endgame. Do I think you'll enjoy it? Yes. Most people don't really get into time traveling to that degree. I'm just a fan of Flash and always have been. So time traveling rules are very important. And there's a reason why Flash, once he breaks through time and space, can never come back to the exact same timeline if he changes any one thing done. On that note, Charles, you have the score of the game? We have the Raptors 87 the Sixers, 85 is the fourth quarter, and there's about three minutes left. Oh, 89 for the Raptors. So they're taking the lead. This series might get tied up, folks. On that note, it's been another episode of Will's Review. I'll catch you guys next time. Line. Excuse me.